In this video, we will look at G06 and RAM control. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a video is released. In this our second video in the series, we will talk about RAM control. The older turret punch press machines were quite simple. There was a flywheel with a clutch and brake system that when engaged would force down the ram onto the tool. This would push the particular tool down onto the material and either pierce the material or form the material, depending on what the tool was designed to do. So if the machine was a 30 ton machine, the ram would hit the punch with the full force of 30 tons and the tool would hit the material with all 30 tons, even if 30 tons were not required. Once the ram would come back up, it would go up to its original position. During this time, the punch would be ejected out of the material by the springs in the tool. Once the ram returned to its original top position, it would give the signal to the control that it had finished the stroke. The control would then move the sheet to bring the position of the next hole under the ram to be punched. This was the same for Bela's, Vegas, Aries, Comas, and all other models before the Vipro series was released. With the Vipro's machine, the ram was driven directly by hydraulics. This gave us full control over the positioning of the ram and also the amount of force applied. Not only could we specify to what position the ram should descend to push the punch through the material, but also how much the ram should retract. This opened new possibilities for punching speed and quality of forming. Today, the hydraulic ram machines like the Vipro series have been discontinued and replaced by servo motors that control the ram like in the EM or AE series, but the concept is exactly the same and so is the programming. Let's look at an example of RAM control. In the picture, we see the punch beginning at its top position. As the RAM comes down, it pushes the punch down at its fastest speed until it gets to a certain point above the material. At this point, it continues to come down, but at a relatively slower speed. The punch finishes its descent once it goes through the material and comes out the other side by a certain distance. It then comes back up at high speed until it reaches a certain point above the material. At that point, it will wait until the sheet of material is positioned for the next hit. This is repeated until all punching is done with that particular punch. Once it is finished, the ram will return to its top position, which frees the tool to return to its original position height. Notice that between hits, the tool stroke is reduced, as there is no need to return the tool to its original position height. It only needs to come out of the material. The same is true with the bottom position. Once the punch completely pierces the material, there is no need for it to go any lower. This is how the overall punching speed was increased. Remember. The material will not move to the next position until the signal is given that the ram has finished its stroke. If the stroke length is reduced, it will increase punching speed dramatically. Another advantage is for forming tools. In the past, when a forming tool was purchased, the operator would have to test the punch on a particular thickness of material. By adjusting the height of the tool, this would adjust how far down the tool was pressed by the ram. Of course, this would have to be redone if the material thickness varied. Starting with the Vipro series, setup time was greatly reduced. An operator could choose an M code specifically for that tool and enter all setup information for RAM movement on the control. The M code for that tool would then be specified to the programmer. No longer a need to change the tool length or use any shimming. What the machine needs to know from our G-code program is what the material thickness is, the type of material, and what punching mode or M-code to punch with. 
That's where G06 comes in. For modern machines like Vipros, EM, and AEs, we need to specify this in our program before the actual punching is started, before or after the G92. In the G06, the A specifies the thickness of material and the B specifies the type of material. There are three types of material to choose from. Zero, which represents steel or medium hardness. One, or stainless or hard material. And two, or aluminum or soft material. When the control reads the thickness, it will automatically adjust the RAM settings so the punch will move to the top and bottom positions as they were set up on the machine. There is no need to adjust the punch physically. The material type is used for the machine to know how much tonnage it should apply to the RAM. Now that the machine knows the thickness and type of material, it needs to know the mode of punching. There are different modes represented by M codes. Verify your machine manual for a list of available M codes. Every forming tool has its own specific M code. For tools that punch regular holes, M500 and M501 are usually used, where M501 is programmed for rooftop punches as they have to go deeper in the material and retract higher out of the material. So before any punch is used, we need to specify with which mode we want the machine to punch. Let's take our G-code example from the previous video and modify it for a VIPOS 357. And let's say that our part is 60,000 mild steel. If you haven't seen our previous video, go check that out. The G92 is correct for the VIPOS 357, but we need to add the G06, A0.060, 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 B0. Then we need to add M500 since we are punching holes with all our tools and no special tools are being used. The M500 will stay active until another mode is specified so we don't need to repeat it before every hit. Let's simulate using our punch sim software before we punch it on the machine. What would happen if we were to send the program to the machine, which has RAM control, without any G06 information? By default, the machine would use the maximum thickness allowable, which in this case would be 0.250 inch or 6.4 millimeters as thickness, and mild steel as material type. M500 would be used by default if no mode was specified. This would increase the overall punching time for running the sheet. When you see a high-speed punching demo, a major reason for the speed is that the RAM stroke is reduced to a minimum. That's it for now. See you soon in the next video as we continue our punch programming series. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications every time a video is released.